you think you're strong? In today's video, I'm gonna show you two of the very best exercises for excellent, phenomenal core strength. Boom. People often got it confused on how to train the core. Some of them are doing insane amount of crunches. Just Others are busy doing some stability work, using some kettlebells only in one arm and doing some unilateral exercises to really target core stability in, in, in this way. And the other ones are doing all sorts of dynamic band work to really target the transverse abdominis and really get that, uh, get that core stability. And the other ones are doing the dragon flag, the Bruce Lee best exercise for the core. Then we got the groups who are doing the squats on unstable surfaces because they believe the unstable surface is the best thing to really target the core stability. And the last group, the ball handlers. So the ones who believe that throwing a heavy ball will uh, be the best thing to get that, that functional core strength, you know? Ah. So if you want to learn not only how to have a strong core, but also how to improve your pulling strength, your lower body strength, if you want to become a coach, if this training thing is your life, if you want to become seriously good at it, the best at it, you want to coach other people as well, then make sure to click this link right here below this video and attend my webinar. I'm going to show you some of the secrets that I learned during the past 15 freaking years of doing this shit, so you, you can't miss this out. So really make sure to attend the webinar happening on a Thursday, 9 p.m. Uh, Slovenian time. <laughs> so yeah, make sure to click the link and you'll get all the information you need and I'll see you at the webinar. Bam. All right, let's get, let's get serious. Well, I'm not necessarily saying that all of the exercises I showed are wrong or there's something bad with doing those exercises. It's just that the adaptation that you get from doing those exercises is literally becoming better at those specific exercises. It's not very transferable. So today I'm gonna to show you two of the simplest exercises that you can use to get a strong core. Oof, that sounds tricky. So basically, we have two basic functions of, of what we call our core. Let's divide it two basic functions, just to be simple. We have the, the flexion and then we have the extension. So usually we have to maintain those in a realistic environment. Uh, you have to maintain a stable lower back position. So that's usually the case. So if you're doing all sorts of gymnastics and flipping and stuff like that, you're using your core a lot, your core flexor. So you need, you're doing a backflip, you jump up, you need to pull. So it's really your abs are working a lot. So in that case, it pays off to do something for that flexion. So that would be the hanging leg raise. Why? 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 <laughs> so I'm currently injured, so I can't do a hanging leg raises because uh, I got a hit in the ribs and got cracked a little bit there. So any type of flexion just feels uh, feels awkward. But yeah, that's the first function. We need to do. We need to be able to do some hanging leg raises. If you're an athlete and you can't do three sets or five sets of five on the hanging leg lifts, lifting them about up to here, so a little bit higher, 90 degrees. So let's say somewhere here would be ideal. You don't have to fully compress. That's more of a case of mobility, but for the strength, we need this range of motion. So for three sets of five controlled reps, about twice per week, if you can do that, your flexion is uh, pretty damn good. All right, so this is the kind of hanging leg lifts we need. This is it. Johnny, give us the spiel. So you want to start in a posterior pelvic tilt, slight depression in the shoulders. If they hurt a little bit, if not, you can just hang passively. Both are okay. So posterior pelvic tilt, feet a little bit in front of you in the bottom position and core is already engaged. You should already feel it. Boom, and that's the starting position and the finishing position, very important. Now we lift the legs as high as we can with hips stay down, preferably that's somewhere up to here. Boom, absolutely perfect. Feet a bit in front in the bottom, stay here. Yes, 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 it makes it. Feel the core? Yeah. Boom. So if you're an athlete, three sets of five like this, you should be able to do. Finish it, man. Come on, your core is gonna be exhausted. Oof. <laughs> Boom. So regarding the flexion, Johnny has it covered. Whether he wants to do, he can do those reps with five kgs weighted. So two kgs, 2.5 per leg for what? Three sets of five? Yeah. Goddamn. 
<laughs> That's better than me right now. If you can already do the variation, he showed the next stage would be either to add lo add weight or to increase the range of motion. Mm -hmm. Show us the three reps, fully uh, post the bar. Boom, with hips in a low position. And you want to be touching the bar with your toes, not with your shins. Phenomenal execution. Beautiful. Bravo. All right. And now we're just showing some of the rookie mistakes, huh? All right. <laughs> All right. So mistakes that I least want to see is uh, avoiding the core work yeah. by going anterior. And the guys with weak, uh, weak core flexion uh, have a tendency to do that. So the guys who have a bit tight hip flexor, a bit anterior pelvic tilt, usually have very strong extension, but kind of weak flexion. So in that case, they tend to be anterior in the starting position as well, like this. John is going to exaggerate a little bit, but just for you to get the case. So here we go up, and then again anterior. So that's a great way. You can hollow through, so lift it a bit higher. Yes, and now here going anterior. See, that's a great way of completely eliminating the flexor. So that's what you don't want to do. Now stay in posterior pelvic tilt as you lower down. Boom. And you're going to see once you try it, it makes a huge difference. Boom. Absolutely perfect. That's what you want. No swinging and no bullshit like that. Straight arms. Beautiful execution. Thank you, John. Oh. And the other side of the core work is that extension. So that we're using in a realistic environment, usually when we're picking stuff up, that's where we need that isometric extension. So if I'm about to pick something from the floor and lower back roundness, or it doesn't provide the stability that I want, so maybe you want to lift something up and your hips are like, like going like this, in that case, you're lacking core stability. And that's the most important aspect of core stability. It's not pulling the bands, it's not throwing something, it's not pulling the cables in some sort of functional strength patterns, whatever that is. It's literally getting under a barbell and squatting. Because if you can maintain that lower back stability and uh, if you can actually lift, let's say 100 kgs for three sets of five or 150 kgs, for three sets of five if you're a serious athlete. That gives you phenomenal core strength and stability, which will serve you great if you're a wrestler, MMA fighter, if you're a parkour athlete. So what I'm saying, guys, is if you're an athlete where you need to use your legs, whether you play table tennis, <laughs> or you're doing arm wrestling, you need your back strength to pull backwards, or you're doing free running, I will tell you, I never felt lighter on my feet than when my deadlift was at 225 kgs and my squat was at 170 kgs. I never felt lighter on my feet. I felt like my jumping was better. When I land from height, the hips are more stable and the lower back just feels phenomenal. How about with you, Johnny? Once you started squatting and deadlifts, how did you, your jumping ability looks pretty darn good right now. Yeah, the backflip got way better. Way better, that's right. You have more drive, so if, if you can squat or deadlift 150, 200 kgs with a stable lower back, you have phenomenal core strength. So those are the two most important aspects of core training, that's what you're here, remember this. One is the flexion which you need if you're an, an acrobat or maybe you're a hand balancer, you need good compression in that case. Here, spending some time would be phenomenal. And also if you're a gymnast or a calisthenics athlete, obviously. If you can do three sets of five of proper form, hanging leg lifts, your core is freaking weak. Which means when you're pulling your weighted chin up, you would be able to pull more weight if you had a stronger core. Because once you engage that core, everything else engages, and it's easier to pull that weight. What happens when you pull a one on chin up, when you're up to here struggling? Your legs lift up, your core engages, and makes everything easier. So that's why I make sure to work on your hanging leg lifts and work on your squat and the Romanian deadlift as well. That's the variation we're gonna show you in today's video. Let's get to it. All right, so we got the flexion covered, some hanging leg lifts will do the trick. Five sets of five twice a week is freaking phenomenal. Or if you're really obsessed about it, you can add some pike ups as well. And we really work on that compression. Or the ab wheel as well is not such a, such a bad idea to add if you really want to be strong and maintaining posterior pelvic tilt. So maybe you're very weak at that one. Maybe you can't really do the front lever very well or something like that. So if you want a stronger posterior pelvic tilt, the ab wheel is actually great to use as well. And then the maintaining extension. So first we have this uh, phenomenal, amazing uh, homemade kettlebell uh, that they made. It works beautifully. So 
this is going to be the very first, the easiest progression. It's going to be a Romanian deadlift. So this is actually for, for people who also have trouble with uh, lower back or lower back pain. You can start like this very easy. You can just pick it up from somewhere higher so you don't have to start uh, from the floor if your pipe flexibility is limited as well. So basically, brace the core. Learn how to inhale in the diaphragm. That's also very freaking important. Make sure to check my deadlift and squat video for the lower back strength. That's going to serve you great as well. It's going to be somewhere up in this corner so basically i want your stance kind of like this kind of like a sumo deadlift from here slight anterior pelvic tilt very important i see some guys here going Whoof, posterior oh my back just hurts doing it so your anterior and boom you squeeze the glutes as well you see my ass right now tight now it's relaxed i'm completely anterior boom so you activate the glutes by turning your feet out boom actively squeeze glutes so this is the position you want to be so from here have the kettlebell like close Lower it down as deep as you can, and then bring it back up, maintaining anterior, anterior pelvic tilt. Boom. Maintain slight retraction here, depression obviously, but keep the kettlebell close so the lat is engaged as well. You don't want to be here. Boom, you want the lat engaged and keep the weight close. Lower it as low as you can. Stand back up, keep the knees out. Boom. So this is with a very light weight, but if you're afraid or if you're an older gentleman, it would be a great way to start. And then we can go and load it up more and you can put a, you can start by doing some Romanian deadlifts or if your flexibility is good enough, even some conventional deadlifts. So with a barbell, it will go kind of like this, lowering the weight close to as deep as you can and then stand back up. You can bend the legs a little bit more if your pipe flexibility is limited or if it feels comfortable, you can also keep the legs more straight, really work the hamstrings and the lower back. Keep the weight close, very, very important. And try to breathe right here in the stomach. Maintaining, bracing your core, boom, and lift. Fantastic. And in the beginning, it's quite okay if you look yourself in the mirror to make sure that your hips are stable and traveling right down the center. So very, very important not to have the tendency to do this, which can happen quite a lot of times that your body is a bit unsymmetrical, one hip, one hip has more internal rotation, the other one has more external rotation. So sometimes our body, especially under weight, tends to do all sorts of weird shit. So that's where the core stability kicks in, baby. So that's why, really make sure your hips stay completely stable, traveling directly down the center, and maintain that slight anterior pelvic tilt. So next to the deadlift, we have the squat, and this is actually the primary exercise you should do for your core stability. So about three sets of five, twice per week will be phenomenal for your core strength. And then you can also add one or two sets of deadlifts. And that is absolutely perfect. Boom, so that is core strength. I know this video might not be exactly what you expected, but those are the two most important aspects of core strength. If you can squat and deadlift safely, you don't have to break a world record, but if you can squat safely 100 kgs, if you're an athlete, you should be able to do that because that's the real core strength, maintaining that anterior pelvic tilt under load and your hips stable. It's gonna strengthen your hips, your legs, your lower body. You're gonna able to jump higher, punch, uh, punch stronger, your punch is gonna go, everything is basically gonna go up from having a stronger deadlift, everything regarding lower back strength. And regarding the core compression, ah, the hanging leg lifts are the best thing. So if you're doing flips, you want a nice pike back flip and you feel like it's difficult to pull your legs up there, then definitely make sure to continue doing flips, but add some core training. If you add some hanging leg lifts, uh, five sets of five twice per week would be absolutely phenomenal. And one final detail, I don't recommend doing these two things in the same training session. Actually, because recently, especially with my lower back, I realized I'm okay with, with extension, I'm okay with deadlifts and squats, and I'm okay with flexion as well. I don't like mixing the two in the same training session because it's a completely different task and I realize it really doesn't feel comfortable for my lower body. So if you feel like your lower back is giving you any troubles, then make sure not to do those two things, the flexion and the extension on the same day, but do it on separate days. Boom. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it, guys. Really make sure to do some squats, do some deadlifts, and to also do some hanging leg lifts. And you're gonna have a strong core and everything else is going to be stronger and you're going to be a better athlete because of it. So yeah, that's it for this video. For everybody who really enjoys calisthenics and really enjoys strength training and you want to make a living out of becoming a coach, you want to be the top calisthenics or fitness coach, then really make sure to check out my webinar. I'm going to be teaching live and every aspect regarding training is going to be covered. So really make sure to click this link 
right here below the video and uh, attend my webinar on Thursday. And uh, yeah, you're gonna become the absolute best calisthenics coach. So Thursday, yeah, Thursday, it's a webinar, Thursday, live webinar. I'm also gonna show you the Sky University, the absolute best uh, training program out there. But more on that, more on that later. Make sure to click the link, see you at the webinar. Get out of it. Oh, and always remember, you're a champion. Boom.